Hello rugby fans and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a bit of a different video for you guys. I will be running down my top five things I want to see in the upcoming Big Ant Studios Rugby World Cup video game which is now 99% confirmed I would say if you are looking at social media and the Big Ant Studios Twitter page it's very very much hinted at of course the Rugby World Cup is this year so the game you would think 100% is coming out this year probably you know the World Cup's in September so maybe a month before or around then you would think that would be the date that Big Ant Studios are aiming at so we're in 2023 a new rugby video game is coming out. Let's dive into the top five things I want to see in the upcoming video game. But for, before we do, please do drop a like if you enjoy this video and you want to see more of these types of videos on the countdown to the new rugby video game. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the upcoming video game as well and what do you want to see in it. It'll be interesting to get a discussion down there and see if my top five things I want to see are similar to you guys. And of course, if you haven't already and you want to stay up to date with the channel, then please do move that subscribe button so let's get things started now with my point for number five and that is licenses now of course if you are bringing out a rugby world cup video game i mean you would think that the rugby world cup license itself would be there so that includes all of the graphics the use of the trophy um, the stadiums, of course, where the World Cup will be played, which is in France, the teams, the kits, the players, everything like that. Um, it's got, if you bring another Rugby World Cup game, it's, it's got to be the Rugby World Cup licensed. You know, Big Ant Studios brought out the Ashes cricket game, and of course, the Ashes was licensed. AO tennis video game, of course, the Australian Open was licensed. So if it is true and it looks like it that they are bringing out a Rugby World Cup video game, then 100% the Rugby World Cup license itself will be in this game, which will be brilliant. It'll be good to have an official game mode in there with perhaps, you know, the theme music, the World in Union song playing, you know, presentation even as things like the scoreboards and you know the team lineups things like that all looking authentic and like you will see on tv when the real world cup takes place so that has got to be a guarantee and then on, of course on top on top of that how many licenses can they get can they get the premiership license can they get the urc um can they get smaller leagues like the mlr and things like that um you know it's going to be difficult to get all of them perhaps and that's where my point coming up will uh, come into conversation because if you play the big ant video games particularly the cricket ones you'll know that licensing isn't too much of an issue because you can download created teams kits things like that on the game um, but it would be nice to get a couple of official leagues of course i'm from england i support the bristol bears so if we've got the international teams all licensed via the world cup having the premiership license as well would be brilliant so that if i'm playing a premiership season i'm using the premiership balls the posts the advertising things like that it really just does add to the game and adds to the longevity of the game because it's authentic but like i said not too much of an issue if some of the leagues are missing because as long as they've got that big sort of creation suite and community downloads then it shouldn't be too much of a problem if you go and play beyond studios cricket 22 you know you can go straight in there go to the creations download all the latest teams kits things like that so that's why licensing for me is down at number five because i think the international teams will be sorted via the world cup license and anything after that is a bonus next i've already mentioned it once but point for number four for me is going to be longevity you know uh, i don't expect them to be bringing out rugby video games every year like a fifa or anything like that so you would have thought it's going to be you know if it's something they want to do into the future it's going to be at least every sort of two or three years a bit like the cricket uh, series obviously had cricket 19 then they brought out cricket 22 so there's a three-year gap there 
So we need longevity in the game. We need to be able to play the game, have fun, have enjoyment for the whole three year period. And longevity for me, I've mentioned it already in regards to customization. Obviously that's key um, because you know, there's gonna be three seasons of rugby while you're playing this game. So the ability to download and update kits and things like that really, really helps. But of course, a main point for longevity is also game modes. I'll get into career mode uh, a bit more in a minute, but lots of different game modes will help. Will there be an ultimate team style rugby mode like you've got in rugby 22? Um, they haven't really dived into that in their other sports games so I don't think there will be um, but the ability like I've already mentioned to play an official World Cup tournament um, obviously there'll be the career modes is there going to be any challenge modes if they've got the World Cup license could you do a sort of legendary challenge mode where you recreate moments from previous World Cups you know could I recreate Johnny Wilkinson's famous drop goal for example Things like that would be incredible. And then, you know, would we have legendary teams that we could play with? Could we play as Jonah Loma, for example, in the you know famous All Backs from back in the day? Could we recreate the 2019 World Cup final between England and South Africa and finally get that revenge on South Africa? Who knows? But big legendary moments. I mean, being able to sort of recreate that would be incredible if they've got the World Cup license. Perhaps they have the ability to bring in some classic teams uh, that we can play with. So yeah, longevity is key. Different game modes is key. Obviously, I'll be diving into career mode shortly because that's my next point. But just, you know, firing up the game and thinking, you know, today I'm going to play an exhibition. Tomorrow I'm going to play career mode. Oh, this weekend I feel like doing a World Cup playthrough. I'm going to do that. And just something that's going to keep you coming back for more is definitely key. And that brings me on to point number three, which is career mode. Now, as we talk about longevity and things like that, career mode in sports video games are absolutely vital. For me, that's why Rugby 22 never really reached the heights. Its career mode was more of an ultimate team card picking style game, which is not for me. Rugby Challenge 4 had a much better, deeper career mode, but again, there wasn't too much there. You, you sort of played a few seasons and it got a bit boring. I'm expecting Big Ant Studios to step it up. If you play the Cricket 22 or the AO Tennis games, things like that, you have big, robust career modes. You have cutscenes, you have press conferences, you have interviews, you have all sorts of different things. You have man of the match ceremonies, you have training at the gym and things like that. Just, I'm really, really hoping that it's gonna be a robust career mode. Whether you start off in sort of club level rugby or not, I'm not sure. Um, you know, that that's more of a my player sort of thing on, on Cricket 22. I want the ability to be able to play as a whole team. I want to be able to take the Bristol Bears as a whole and play through a career mode many, many seasons. Cutscenes in there to make it interesting. European tournaments as well, you know, the ability to play and qualify for the Champions Cup or the Challenge Cup, things like that. Um, yeah, a real robust career mode. And of course, having a My Player career mode as well would be brilliant. Um, you know, you've had things like that before in Rugby Challenge. So yeah, having that as well would add to the longevity and being able to create a player, playing through the club ranks, the lower ranks, and working your way up to an international legend would be fantastic. But for me, the main enjoyment comes as playing as a team in rugby. So the ability to take on the Bristol Bears or whoever it may be, play through Premiership season, sign players, have a little cutscene where you've, he's holding up a shirt or whatever it may be you know taking them up the table qualifying for the champions cup hopefully qualifying for the premiership playoffs winning the premiership at twickenham and then trying to replicate that you know so more of a manager career mode and perhaps the ability to move to different teams right i've i've won the premiership as bristol i've won the champions cup let's go and take over a team in the urc or in super rugby for example so yeah, a robust career mode is key. And like I said, they've got a history of really creating good fun career modes. So I'm sure that is in good hands and that is something they will be looking at. 
and uh, yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with we move on to point number two and for me that is customization and the creation suite i've already talked about it initially when we were speaking about licenses but it is key for me being able to create your own teams create your own leagues create your own kits players things like that is vital particularly for the longevity of the game i'll play a season as bristol bears on a career mode having great fun in real life they might have brought out updated new kits for the new season i can if you're playing on cricket 22 there's some talented people on there within sort of days weeks whatever it may be the new kits are up there i can download them i can link them to the bristol bears and we've got the new kits already we could do that for the whole premiership whatever it may be it would be fantastic as well as international like i said if you can't obviously they'll have the world cup license so hopefully the all of the international teams at the world cup will be ready to go but there of course are international teams who didn't make it to the world cup so having the ability to go on the creation suite, download their kits, down update their squads, things like that, it really adds so much. I think that's why the cricket games have such a great sort of longevity and a real big community behind them is because they can go on there, they can download England's cricket team from 1997 within seconds and you can create your own sort of challenge modes. It is vital, particularly if you haven't ended up picking up the licenses say they haven't got the license for the urc you could go onto the creation suite download the teams download the kits everything like that and end up with a fully licensed looking game and just making everything just that much much more um, enjoyable and i know i keep saying the word that is the word really of of the video is longevity being able to refresh the teams refresh the kits refresh badges if need be just add so much more to the game and then finally of course point number one i've been rambling for almost well over 12 minutes now and we have got to point number one and of course it is gameplay the most needed feature of any sports game in particular well any game really is enjoyable addictive gameplay and I don't think since sort of rugby 08, a rugby game has really hit the heights where you sort of just are excited to just load up the game and, and just play an exhibition against whoever it may be, just to get that ball chucked about, playing different roles, playing different tactics, things like that. Probably the closest is rugby 22, in my opinion. The gameplay is fun. Um, it's not realistic by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and it doesn't look amazing sometimes, but it is fun. You get in a game, you're flicking the ball around, you're passing it about, you can create flowing moves, you can use tactics and things like that, and it's enjoyable. Um, but I would love the Big Ant Studios game to just go a step above that and just really bring back that Rugby 08 levels of excitement, that Joan alone rugby levels of excitement where you wanted to get your friends around, you wanted to load up the game, and you were just enjoying, laughing, having a good time, playing a game that was fun and made you want to come back for more. Now that then begs the question, what sort of way do you go down? Do you go down a simulation type of gameplay where you're trying to re recreate rugby as realistic as possible? Or do you go to a more Joan Alona rugby style, um, rugby 08 style where it's a bit more arcadey? A bit more unrealistic but it's fun and it's enjoyable um, hopefully they can find a balance of both where it's enjoyable and fun to play but it's also realistic i understand that is um you know it's going to be hard work um but yeah i i have faith and confidence that big ant studios can do that they've got a track record all of the cricket games as far back as Don Bradman have all been fun and enjoyable. Yes, you see a few glitches and things like that, but that can be worked on and updated on. Um, even the tennis games, you know, it's got its fans, it's got its haters, but the AO tennis games were enjoyable to play, um, pick up and play. So I am fully confident they can do that and replicating rugby in a realistic but fun way is definitely something we need uh, number one really gameplay of course the foundation of the game 
So there we go. That is my top five things I want to see in Big Ant Studios Rugby World Cup game in 2023. Of course, there are a lot more other things. You know, I'd love to see a brilliant commentary team, an NBA 2K level commentary team, whether that can happen or not I don't know perhaps you can get a bit like cricket 22 you've got different commentators they're rotating around things like that could you get sideline reporters and things who knows um but having a really good commentary team would be great I don't think a rugby game really has ever had great commentary of course rugby 08 has classic lines here and there but it is a bit all over the place just something and another thing that will immerse you in the game Another thing is presentation. I suppose it comes under gameplay, but you know, having the players coming out from the tunnels, the realistic TV camera angles, things like that, the players lining up, national anthems and things if it's in the World Cup. I could go on and on for days and days of things I want to see, but they were the top five main things I want to see. If you've enjoyed, please do drop a like. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see in the new Big Ant Studios Rugby World Cup game. Is there anything I've missed? Have I got them in the right order? What do you think down below? And do you want to see more videos like this as we build up to the Rugby World Cup 2023 game? As always, if you haven't already, please do more that subscribe button to keep up to date with the channel in any future videos. Don't forget to hit my links to the social media as well. Ever since we've hit 2023, I've been trying to put out some sort of content every single day, whether that's on Twitter, whether that's on Instagram, whether that's on TikTok. TikTok is picking up. I've been doing quite well on there, building up some momentum. So follow all of my socials if you want to stay up with absolutely everything. And that'll be it for today's video. I will see you in the... Virtual Scrum. Hey.